because you got stupid money, then yeah. work without looking at the clock. And I tell you oh, what, wow. I've never ever worked looking at the clock to be like, when oh, is five o'clock? I need to go home. I need to go home. Never. I bartended. I broke nights. I did right. never, never right. looked at the clock. No. You you're won't. focused on the wrong thing for sure. You're not laser focused on what you need to be doing. You're laser focused on I need to get out of here or when I'm going to get out of here. And that's just not going to work. You know, that's yeah. a, that's something yeah, that, you know, like, it. When, it ha when it comes, it comes, you got to get the when work is done. Then you could go, you know what absolutely. I mean? So absolutely. remember that guys. That, that's so, a great mindset. So mm -hmm. that was, I don't know if you guys understood that with the accent. Cause I only st understood half of it. So I don't know what the heck she <laughs> Who said. Who cares? John understood it. That's all that matters. I understood it. For sure. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Yeah, go ahead. Repeat what I said, Mike. No, but wh what she said was, if you want to be able to buy things without looking at the price tag, then don't look at the clock when you're working. That's right. And there was an analogy or a quote that said, uh, well, not, no, it was an analogy, I guess. It says, the, the, the clock is stressful for both individuals, the one that wants to be successful and the one that just is working. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to butcher this. But the point was, the individual that watches the clock from nine to five to get out is still stressing over the clock where the other one the johns or the monas mm -hmm. uh is looking at the clock going i need to get more work done more work done more work done before that time comes and just yeah. hustling 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 and then continues on so i like how you started this off man you see I'm Savage. Telling you. it's awesome it's I'm awesome it's true I, too yeah it's just the way i'm thinking today you know and that's and that's, that's how it is too it's like you know like <laughs> even like when i start working or doing something when I start on a task or whatever it is, I just laser focus in on it. And that's what I, I just get lost in. Like even, you know, I mean, forget about eating and forget about what, I mean, you're just busy and you're just working, working, working. You're like, all right, until I accomplish this, I ain't moving, I ain't going anywhere, I ain't doing anything else, right? Until I get this done. Um, that's the mindset that I'm usually in. You know, now I, I have to make sure I eat my meals. I don't want to be shrinking. I want to make sure I'm retaining what I'm supposed to be doing. So, you know, that's a vital thing. And that's something I think that you need to be aware of. But I mean, even Elon Musk, he, he said kind of the best like the way that he got successful was was he worked double the time he said if i don't sleep as much and i work double the time then i'll get done double the productivity than what the other guy is doing right now yeah. so he used to stay up he'd code all night with his brother and they'd code and then one would sleep for a couple hours and then wake up and then they would just keep switching spots and then obviously you see where elon musk is today and you know even what he does today he doesn't even he owns like a little like home somewhere like a like a little minute home right but he has no house so he hasn't had a house i don't know how many years and what he does is, is he i did sleeps, not know any of this he sleeps at x or spacex every night or he'll sleep on a friend's couch or in a spare bedroom because he's traveling so much it does not make sense to me so he's like i am literally somewhere every other day so he's like for me like having a home and all that, that that'd be great and all but I wouldn't be there to be able to utilize it. And the time that I'd be there, I should be at my businesses, making sure everything is running and we're progressing to where we need to be. And that's just like, you have all, you're the most richest guy in the world, right? You never have to work again. You can literally like turn it off and like generational money. Yeah. yeah, yeah. His, his great, great, great grand. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he has like 14 kids and I'm starting to learn more and more about some of these guys and what they're trying to do is repopulate themselves. Like I, I heard about the, the Telegram uh, founder and owner yesterday and his name is Pavan, right? And basically what Pavan did was, was he created Telegram and Telegram is a uh, encrypted email service, right? So if you don't want nobody knowing your stuff, it's totally secure. The federal government of the United States, Pavan came out and said that basically like they approached his engineer that worked for his company and said, listen, I, wanna, I want you to create a back end for us. So we can start snooping around, seeing what's going on with some of these different groups and such and that. The engineer shut it down, told Pavan about it. Pavan came out and told us in this last recent um, interview that he had. Well, yesterday he just got arrested in Paris and nobody knows why. He literally <laughs> just arrested him. For their, they said that he, he committed some criminal acts on Telegram or whatever it is, but there's no, there's nothing that they've, they've supported with evidence yet or information. So it's just crazy how that goes, right? Like, you know, you could you could be the richest guy in the world or have, you know, the most money. That doesn't mean you're secure and you still have to watch out for things. So at that point, like it's just another another, another case. I mean, you work real hard 
um, you obviously want the payoff for it, and uh, you don't want to have anybody else coming after you. But those two guys, they do. Federal government wants to come after Elon Musk still, talking about him and stuff like that. It's just crazy. Crazy stuff on that aspect. But I, I love the focus that you and Mo have when it comes to work. You guys just it starts when you wake up and until you go to bed. Yeah. Um, we have in seven weeks, just over seven weeks. I go seven weeks because I'm going to dry up before the Olympia. Yep. Um, but I'm counting. I'm counting. Uh, I'm excited about the Olympia. And I understand that we have our booth and our number is, if I'm correct, 782. Is it 732 correct. or 782? I thought it was 732. Am I you're wrong? Probably, you're probably right over me. I will tell you what it is. So you guys it's all know what it is. 732, that is glasses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's probably me getting it wrong. Yeah. yeah but I think for I'll, everybody, we will be at the Olympia. And again, uh, Johnny has this set up for you guys to come by. There's some merch, there's some gifts and all that kind of stuff. You got to oh, come yeah. by the booth. You got to come by and see everybody in the whole Titan medical team. Yes. I mean, we're going to have everything there from free t-shirts, gift bags, all kinds of different exclusive swag that you might have seen on athletes or models or people out there that aren't even on the website right now. Or this stuff right here. As like we're that. Here. We That's are like there. Hi, hi, yes. how are you doing? What's going on? Of course, Ooh. of course. <laughs> you gotta look good doing it too, right? So that's what it's all about. So we're gonna have all that out there. Obviously, we're gonna have Mike's gonna be there, I'm gonna be there, Shree's gonna be there, Mo's gonna be there, Big Drew's gonna be there, Robbie's gonna be there. Um, I think we got like six or seven tight nets that are gonna be there. Um, three will be in bikinis, so you'll have that too, that aspect. Um Me. It's, it's, <laughs> yes, straight bikini. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. That would be funny. Uh, but yeah, so we're everybody out there. I think it's going to be a great time. 60th year anniversary for the Olympia this year. So I think it's going to be bigger and better than possibly the last couple of years. Oh, oh, they, they are sold out, you know. Somebody know. reached out to me today and said, hey, do you have any polls to get a couple of tickets to buy? Not for yes, yes, out. yes, yes. That's amazing. It is. Great. It is. Bodybuilding yeah. back. Yeah. Yes. Mr. Olympia is yes. back. I love it. I know. It's awesome. It definitely is awesome. So... I mean, you know, I'm just I'm just excited about being out there. It's gonna be what I mean, almost a month, a little over a month, I guess. Like you said, like seven weeks. So, yeah, I'm excited. Got everything booked. That's like the biggest thing. So I'm just like finalizing the way that we we know what the booth's gonna look like. I sent that to you guys, like the shape and everything. So I just gotta work on the the graphic that's gonna go on the back for the magazine portion of what we're gonna do, and just see what we're gonna put on the sides there. And that's it. I, you know, I'll get all the shipping for the stuff that's gonna get shipped down there. And, Ready to rock and roll, man. Ready to get it done for sure. You know, it's it's always anticipation, nervousness, making sure everything's right, and making sure we're going to have everything going out there. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Mo, do you have uh, some questions to go over? What do you, oh, you got you got your things you want to ask? No, I'm just looking. You I'm just looking because I wanted to see what uh, are some of the uh, uh, not yeah. that, but if you if you feel if you feel fatigue. Uh, <laughs> pot belly, so extra fat. Uh, yep. If you feel like you know you have no energy, um, even hair loss, whatever that might be, yeah. uh, there's a sign that something is wrong with your body. Absolutely. And how do you find out what's wrong? Well, with I'm your fatigued. Body? <laughs> <laughs> we know we know why you're fatigued. Yeah, yeah. I need some. And carbs. the way we could find right. out what's going on inside your body. It's mm -hmm. by doing a blood work. Okay, That's so right. let's start with that. Uh, for somebody yeah. that wants to do blood work and to start looking deeper into their health, like what is the protocol for the newbies? What sure. they it's real simple and easy, and that's great. We're starting with blood work because that's key to really looking in the inside, being able to diagnostically check what's going on with some of the different things like your hormones, vital organs, vitamins, and such. So, you know. It's real easy to do, and especially right now. We have a special that's going on, our blood work special for Labor Day. So at nice. that point, males is 130, females is 200. Um, that's with the discount. And basically, it's a real simple process. It doesn't matter where you're located. If you're in Florida, if you're in California, wherever you're at, all you have to do is call or text us, so contact us at our main and only number, 727-389-3220. You'll call up and say, listen, I want to get set for a blood test. So they're going to set you up for the in-depth blood test. They're going to get some information from you, like your name, date of birth, email address, um, phone number, and they'll get the payment for the, the blood test. And at that point, we're going to email you your prepaid lab requisition slip to your email. 
All you'll do is print that up and take that in with your photo identification, your driver's license to any lab corp in your area, or if it's Quest that's in your area, and that's who we assign you to, just walk into there. You give them the slip, you don't owe them any more money, you don't owe them an insurance card. All they're gonna do is draw your blood, and we're gonna get the labs expedited and the results three to four business days to call you, get you set up with a consultation to go over these results and see how we can possibly help you. Look, that's pretty easy. And uh, I know the ladies that are on here probably, they're like, oh, why do we have to pay more? Because ladies yes. should pay less. So can you tell us, <laughs> you know how the girls think, you yeah. know? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So the, the, the reason that the female lab testing is more expensive is because there's more hormone testing on their labs. So you have a couple more tests on your labs. That's why it's a little bit more expensive. Um, it's a little bit more in depth because at that point, it's a little bit harder to treat a female. You have to look at a couple other different aspects than you would a male through a lab work. Um, you know, not to say that males don't have the exact same things we'd be checking on, but it's a little bit different. When we talk about like total estrogens and stuff like that, that really doesn't affect males in that way. Estradiol does. So we really look at estradiol for males, but estradiol and total estrogens can affect the female. So we really want to look at those things. DHA is another one that we throw on there. And DHA is a sex hormone. This is something you can get over the counter in any big box store or you can get it from any compounding pharmacy and such. But, you know, with this, like DHA is a little bit more testy when it comes to a female. And let me explain why. So we put a male on testosterone. Usually your DHA is going to boost up automatically your free testosterone, total testosterone in a perfect world. For a female, if you increase your testosterone levels with DHA levels at the exact same time, what usually happens is those females break out. And then they're really upset because they don't want to break out. And then they're like, well, something's going wrong because I'm, I'm breaking out on my face and, and I might have some acne on my chest or back or whatever it is. And at that point, we don't want that. So usually, uh, usually DHA will come up with a female if they're on testosterone too as well, just like a male. But sometimes that doesn't happen. Um, so that's kind of why we check it just to make sure everything's okay there and everybody's good to go. I, I got a question. Can the, can the DHEA for a guy that's an athlete or focused on being athletic and stuff. Can he be over the range? He can be over the range. It's not going to do anything else for him though. Like he's not going to get like no performance enhancing, like, you know, like, Oh, I, I got super DHEA, you know? So I mean, it's a little bit different. All right. And then with, with DHEA, um, there's, you got companies saying use DHEA seven keto, seven keto. And then there's the other one. There's like three different types of DHEA mixed DHEA with DHEA complete so DHEA. Yeah. I, I, it seems like some companies are saying use this one if you're doing HRT or just trying to get your testosterone up and difference. Is there anything that you specifically know on why choose different ones or just stay with the DHEA? People just talking to sell their product. I, I don't I, know. <laughs> I, honestly, I'm just gonna ask you, that's kind of, that's kind of what it is. Like I, I've seen like all these different brands of DHEA, the keto and all that, you know, what I look at is I look at blood test results. That's what I care about. I could right. care less about anything else. So when we have patients that are low on DHEA and then we supply them with their DHEA, whether it's 25 milligrams a day, and that's usually a good one for females to start on for males. It's usually 50 if they're going to do it. But at that point, like, when I see the levels go up with just the oral DHEA, then we're working. Like, is there any other blood test they're going to look at to say, hey, listen, the seven keto DHEA has this different effect in it, right? And no, you can't, you can't specify. Like if I took the keto DHEA and I took the regular DHEA, okay, well, if they both work, then great. Like they're both going to work for you. But I've seen regular DHEA work on every single patient that we put through like that, that had um, some deficiency. Um, and at that point, raised it up pretty good. Like, just by itself. So, you know, I, I don't know. I, I know vitamin D is another one too, where they have a K1 and all that. And, you know, with vitamin D, like that's the other thing that I see. I see that if you take a vitamin D supplementation and there is an oral that works that I have seen that does work out there through blood. I've used it on myself, Sharice and a couple other people, or we have an injectable and that's just regular vitamin D3. And you inject it, it is 50,000 IUs or you have a 100,000 IU shot. You would take one time a week and you don't have to take any oral supplementation. And that's not any different than anything else. So those work pretty well. I, you know, it, it all, it, it comes down to, to like, you know, like estradiol and estradiol sensitive. And we talked about this before. Yeah. Like there's guys out there like, or, or doctors or it needs to be an estradiol sensitive. Okay, cool. Let's put this to, let's put this to the Pepsi challenge. Let's run it on myself. Let's run a regular estradiol. Let's run estradiol sensitive. And let's see how different this result really is. 
we're talking about one to two points. And that was everybody we've ever ran it on. That's why I don't like, I don't like focus in on it. I know that it was like a new greatest and latest thing. And it sounds a lot better because it's estradiol sensitive instead of just a regular estradiol. And it right. should really, really, you know, hone in on what the real level is. It usually doesn't. I'm just being honest with you guys, you know, okay. and, and I, I see like one or two points. I think I've seen a difference of five points total in every one that I've ever seen. That was massive. That was it. Five total points higher than what the regular one was. Yeah, that was one of the things I think is is the buzz right now is is how much vitamin D um, should you do? Uh, and now it's it's. I think uh, yeah. I think you everybody out there study, read yes. up on it and stuff like that. Do yes. your blood work and then find yes. out what's going on there. Um, yes. Mm-hmm. Because I, th- I think we were watching, uh, I was doing some research, and one doctor is just like 4,000 I use, where uh, other doctors are 10,000 I use with the, the, the basic. So do your research, do your stuff, yeah. like Johnny said, blood work, blood work, blood work, get that done so you understand. I mean, you should get it done at. this weekend because that's it's special. special. Yeah. That's right. It's special yeah. on. And, and you know, here's the thing like with vitamin D, right? You have some doctors, 4,000, 10,000. I'll take anywhere between 10,000 and 20,000 I use orally per day. And at that point, like the range, usually it's 39 or lower is deficient. And I usually come back within the 50s at that level. Now you can go all the way up to the hundreds, like it goes to 108. And you want to watch this because vitamin D can be toxic to your body if you take too much. So you want you don't want to go crazy over that. If it's like a B12 level, you excrete that, it's water, no problem. But, you know, vitamin D, like I said, you know, it really depends on the person too because – some people, you know, they do convert in their bodies still, and a lot of people do not. So they say, hey, listen, go out, get 15 minutes of sun every day, and your vitamin D levels will be healthy. That's untrue. Like, I, I, me, myself, I know. Like, I don't go out there with any suntan lotion on or anything like that. So I'm absorbing full effect of the sun, and I'm not converting when I do on a blood test. When I do on a blood test, if I don't take any supplementation whatsoever, I am deficient. It's not going to work. Yeah. It, it just doesn't work. So, um, and, and vitamin D can create energy, it's renal function support. I mean, there's a lot of things, testosterone. So you want to make sure vitamin D and vitamin D is not a vitamin. Vitamin D is a hormone. So a lot of people don't understand that either. Like you got to make sure we understand what we're really talking about here so we can really treat what we need to and really go about it. So does vitamin D gummies count? They taste so good. <laughs> they do, right? But when we talk about those. We eat them as a dessert. <laughs> I just, I, you know. <laughs> I, I love the fact that they've made something like that taste good for kids so or like good. for adults that don't like it, right? I hate there, – there are some good brands out there, but a lot of the brands use high fructose corn syrup in them. And that's because of the taste and everything like that. So I just – I can't get with that, right? I'm like I'm like literally drinking poison or eating poison down my body. I'm just – I'm just try, try to stay away from it as much as possible. So that's one thing I see in a lot of gummies, a lot of food products, a lot of candies out there. They have that in there. Or corn syrup. You know, they've got all different types of names with what they've just disguised this, this, these syrups with and, and sugar. So at that point, like I, I literally try to watch out for those things, but yeah, I mean, for me, injectable is the best way, but it, if I can get some gummies, that'd be great. If I can get some healthy gummies, that'd be yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. We, uh, we, we kind of, <laughs> Mona eat. hides them from yeah. me. <laughs> we have vitamin C, we have B12, they're all kind of gummies and yeah. they taste so good. And yeah, when yeah, Mike is to, dieting uh, and forget it. Yeah, he, he's like eyeballing the gummies all the time. Is he loving the gummies though? That's good for kids, you know. It gets him going. I, yeah, I, I, I'm, we're trying to get him to get more uh, uh, vitamins in. Good, because um, he's still he. I mean, we're lucky on one aspect that he does. He loves eating, but he loves eating his four different things. Right, and, and that's he still it. needs and vitamins. So, so we know? still got to get the vitamins mm-hmm. in there and the iron right. and stuff like that. So. Right. We're this trying to funny. do that. I um, <laughs> I got to go in and and train today, and it was it was a it was a fun workout. And uh, you know, I got my NAD before I went. I got my Hercules potion and my EAAs. Did my shots and everything like that. And I'm feeling jacked and and just felt good going in to do this workout today. And man, did I fatigue on almost every set. Really. Uh, trying to get the reps in and i just had that day i, I could tell you day. why you, it's like you, you diet he's like not eat like the food that you eat come on so i'm dieting yeah and so i think You're dieting the- again <laughs> of course i, I ain't <laughs> i ain't showing up i ain't showing up yeah. i'm always dieting but yeah. 
I, I want people to know that, that there's a, there's a, there's two folds to this. Like if you're training or I'm training as hard as I am, and I know that I'm optimizing my body the very best it can, and you're going to have days like this, mm -hmm. you're going to have days that you're, you're, I was still getting the weights I wanted, but I just wasn't getting the rep range I wanted and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a great workout and it was fun. I had the whole crew there, but um, it just made me think of there's days like this. There's days that we go in and we train mm -hmm. and it's just not that Titan lifestyle workout that you want. Right. right. Um, but for me, it, it was cool to have this and, and, and to be mentally going, okay, I'm on point. I'm still training, right. I'm, I'm eating what I'm supposed to eat. And I'm not going to change my nutrition to appease the workout because I'm going to have days like this. Do you have days where you go in and you train and it's not the great John workout? Yeah. Yeah. I think everybody has those days. You don't, I mean, you have them once in a while, right? Where you go in there and you, you're just dead tired or, you know, maybe you didn't get your nutrition in like you should have and you're feeling it, right? And you're just feeling it. Or you and me, like I stayed up like on Sunday to like 2.30 in the morning. Cause I was going through this Facebook stuff and like going down the rabbit hole and going through all these different things and scenarios and making sure that was all fixed. <laughs> and then I had to wake up, you know, at five 30 in the morning, cause I have to get Peter up for his baseball training. So, you know, he has to go in the morning, like six 20 or something like that. So I'm taking him every morning. So I'm waking up. So not getting sleep is not a good thing for me, especially lately. Right. Lately I've been on top of my sleep regimen. So this week is definitely, you know, throwing me off a little bit because I still haven't caught up from sleep. I worked all day yesterday, sit up late, woke up today again, 5.30 in the morning, ready to go, and then, you know, just continuing on. So, you know, I, I think sleep plays an important role. I definitely need sleep. And, uh, you know, if I don't get sleep, then I probably will feel like that in the gym. There's some days, though, that will cover it up, right? And that's taking, you know, maybe a second ECA, and I hardly ever do that. But I'm getting ready for Olympia right now. I want to make sure that I'm shredded, ready to go, strong, and looking good. So I might actually take an extra one today. Um, but it'll get, get me through my training, give me that little energy and that boost that I might need. But there are some days where you go in and you're like, damn, like you think you're going to give it or y'all. You're mentally you're there, you're strong, but it's just like, man, it's, just, it's not there today. But that doesn't mean you don't do it. You still, you still go do it. Those people, it's real easy. It's, oh, you know, I'm just not, I just, Hey, my day today just ain't that day. Like, no, I'm just going home. Listen, if you're sore and you're beat up, your body needs to be recovered a little bit. Okay, take the day. But if your body's not all hurt and you're not sore, you don't need any recovery. And you're just tired. You're like, you know, it's just not. What you're just days. mentally, mentally not. Focused That's on what you makes going. you tight and strong. It's yeah. mentally along yeah. with physicality. Yeah. So at that point, like you're going in, like, listen, I got a plan of attack. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fall through with it. If it ain't the best I ever did, that's fine. But at least I, I gave it 100 effort to going in there and doing it, and that's that's where it really counts. I think. I think a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of different excuses or things you can rationalize by not wanting to go to the gym. Hey, listen, I got to go do this. I'm busy today. I didn't get no sleep last night. The kids got. To... So there's so many different excuses that I could come up with. That I don't want to go to the gym. I'm like, hey, listen, I'm just too busy today. I've worked here like eight or nine hours already. I'm ready to go home and go to sleep or do something, <laughs> whatever it is. So. No, I ain't gonna stop it, man. Definitely ain't gonna stop me for sure. I know that. I know I ain't gonna stop you. So I, I want to make this clear for everybody listening. It is my sleep is on point. My nutrition yeah. is on point. Uh, my uh, vitamin supplements is on point. Everything is on point, and I still had that workout. So I just want to make it clear. It wasn't that I was up late. I didn't right. eat. Everything's on point, and I still I didn't suffer the workout. I did the best I could on today's date. But sometimes when you're in the grind mm -hmm. and you're doing everything, it just it's hard. It's hard sometimes. Some Don't days, be hard on yourself. Wait, some days you go in and living from home, you'd be like, Man, I feel tired, I feel destroyed, and I slept. I don't know what it is. And you get to the gym and yeah. you get the best workout. Yeah. Some yeah. days it feels yeah. off, but it still goes in and it yeah. gets the best. And he's yeah. so happy after that because yeah. it's like I got the best workout and I didn't yeah. expect this you know yeah and that's even more awesome right yeah. i mean that's yeah. that's that's the best possible outcome you can get not think you're gonna go on and do it and do it up like you did you know so yeah i definitely have those days too and you're not thinking you're gonna give it the best effort you don't have the energy or or the strength that day and yeah i definitely go in there and rock it out some days too as well so, which is really cool um which leads me to one more thing i, I wanted to mention this because i don't think i got to mention this yet so we've opened up patients as far as demographic wise age wise mm-hmm so now you wow. can be 18 and up. Okay. Wow. So the reason that I did this was because 
All right, your normal 18 year old is in high school, yeah. probably not going to service them. But, you know, an 18 year old that's going to college, right? These are D1 players. I get their parents calling me. Obviously, I don't want to give these kids any hormones, especially if they don't need it, right? right. That's the first question yeah. to me. Like, hey, John, what can you do to put weight on my son? Get him, you know, built up. He needs to have a bigger body wow. for D1. Wow. He's a D1 baseball player. You know, he got, he got a scholarship, but. You know, he's only like 200 pounds. He's like six foot one. He needs that extra inch. So I'm like, listen, I'm like, well, I'm like, you know, we don't really do anything like this. And I was like, you know what? I'm like, we can run blood on him. Let me run blood on him. And I talked to Sharice. I'm like, listen, I talked to medical directors. I'm like, listen, we're not going to do hormones on this kid. So even if it comes back low, we'll, we're going to just you know, refer him out to somebody else. And at that point, they can take care of it. But why not? Why can't we run a blood test on a college athlete and tell him, hey, listen, what's going on here? You're, you're healthy. You're not healthy. What is something else going on that we can help them out with? So we ran the first blood test on uh, an 18 year old. I know his dad very well. And his dad's obviously like, you know, he, he, he's coming in with questions because he don't know about all these different things. And all these other people are telling him, hey, listen, take SARMs, take this, right, right. take that, order it online, do this, give it to him. And, you know, I mean, same thing with my kid, like, you know, for Peter, like, I know exactly what I'm doing home was. Like, if I really wanted to, like, spruce it up and, like, really do it, no problem. I am very confident in what I can do in, in the knowledge. But, like, I, I don't want to put my son at risk for anything in the future. I don't want to jeopardize his health as a natural growth spurt or anything like that. So, you know, for him, like, Hercules Potion has worked fine. Amino acids, nine, he can inject, he can do it for his, for his training. So that's the same thing I want to offer out to some of these college athletes. You don't have to be on true PEDs to get PED performance per se. Like you can take some of these vitamin amino acid injectable therapies. I think they're going to be very, very good for them. And when I tested this kid, his natural testosterone was over the range. He was like a hundred points over. Right. And, that, and I went back to his dad when we got the blood test. I go, look, you don't want to mess with his natural levels, especially where they're at. I mean, he's above range. I mean, dude, I mean, this is really, really good. People pay for levels like this. So it, it would it would be a, you know against advisement and you would be doing your son a disservice if you put him on anything like that. It would shut down his natural production or even if you want to boost that level just to mess with it for a short time. You know, you're 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 messing with with, with something that could be like Russian roulette and never comes back fully to where it was, like his natural level. So yeah, so I you know, I talked to her and, and I got it done. So people can order Hercules, Titan Complete, ECAs. So I can take advantage of some of these different things. They're not going to get hormones. So they're not going to get testosterone or anything like that. I'm not jacking up kids because um, they're kids to me. Even though they're adults at 18 years old, they're still kids. I hear what you're saying. What I think is great is the fact that, you know, I'm around all these kids all the time at Gold's, yeah. you know, or traveling the world and, and being yeah. at expos and these kids are coming up. Yeah. Um, and now they have an opportunity to at least see what their blood work is relative to just being – 18 and 19 and going up to the big guy at the gym going what are you doing right right and so i think it's a it's a great thing that you're at least helping them understand where they are and their parents where they are right i i think i've spoke about this before but uh when i was 14 to 15 my parents were freaked out on the amount that i was eating and, and growing so they were concerned so they took me to a, a nutritionist at that time and the family doctor going hey what's going on does he have tapeworm or something? Because it, uh, it doesn't make sense that he's eating like so much. He was just going through puberty. You know, my parents, <laughs> you know, they just, it was one of those things. But then, you know, I put on such size and stuff, which is great. But nowadays, I think it's great that the parents get to go in there with the kid and, and check this and make sure that they're yeah. okay. Like, Because I'm in California. These sideline yeah. dads, I know. you know, these sideline dads push the kids like, like, I know. I know. Trust I me. I hate to see the you know a parent like that going, "Hey, son, you're 18. Let's get you out." Ugh. And that's or the kids come to their parents and they're like, "Hey, listen, I want to do this. Like, I got to get jacked up. I got to do this. Like, right?" Yeah. And the parents don't really know. They have no idea, right? They really don't, unless they have some background or experience or knowledge on it. They really don't. And they, they're just kind of listening. And they ask for advice from one of their buddies or friends or somebody that looks jacked up. And they're like, hey, listen, what what should I do for my son or, or my kid? I've got females. I just went my DM on the way here. I know a guy that owns a gym and his, his daughter is, she's a D one athlete. She just got her pro card too in bodybuilding. Right. So at that point, the coaches are telling him wow. and her that she needs to do all this other shit to win. 
Like she wants to go to Olympia and she wants to do this. She better start doing all these drugs. And of course the dad's like, he's a pretty down earth guy, ex Marine. Like, you know, he's like, I don't know about all this. You know, I don't think that my daughter should be taking all this. Is this going to take away her femininity? Like, cause she wants that. Right. She doesn't want to be like, you know, she doesn't want to look like a guy or talk like a guy. She doesn't want to lose her hair. She wants to, you know, she wants to win. She's willing to do whatever it takes to win, but I'd like to see, you know, some other options for her, John. What do you think you can do for her? And I'm just like, all right, man, like we can do a lot of different things. Let's, let's look at the blood. Let's, you know, pick it apart. And she's like, a, I think a sophomore in college right now. So she's like 20 years old. So she's right there on that cusp too, but you know, there's different people out there and there's, there's younger kids out there. They're 18 or even girls that have hormone imbalances, have nothing to do with taking anything in the past or anything like that. Just natural. Just like Sharice. Sharice, you know, when she was 16 years old, she was, you know, diagnosed with one of the most extreme cases of endometriosis in the country. And she's had four, she's had five laparoscopies to take care of this. And every time they go into laparoscopy, they cut here and they go in and they look for endometriosis, which the best way that I could describe it to somebody so they can get a visual picture of it, think of venom and venom sticks to everything. That's how the inside is with endometriosis and it covers the ovaries and can actually go to other vital organs. And it's mm. like the sticky, like elastic, and it can be very, very painful. And it's an upcoming thing for females. So with, with her, with, with Sharice, she had this, she had PCOS which PCOS revs up the ovaries in a female. And what that does in turn is that makes females testosterone levels naturally higher than the above normal range. So a normal range for females is zero to 44. Sharice used to come back at 77, natural, no testosterone, no nothing. So with this, there's different things that could happen, especially for a female. So a female that has PCOS and her ovaries are revved up all the time from young, then those are more the females that might have male pattern baldness, might have facial hair and more masculine traits. It's because they've had more masculine hormones in their body for a longer extended period of time. This can be fixed if caught early, right? We can, we can actually suppress those levels. So they're within a natural range. Um, the other thing is, is with a lot of females out there, they might have breast cancer in their family. So Sharice has breast cancer, not only on one side, but both sides. So a protocol for this that no other general practitioner has ever came up with for Sharice, no gynecologist has ever came up with Sharice, is that the treatment for this, if you have this in both of your sides, that you're at a high risk for breast cancer. So at that point, the protocol is, is an aromatized inhibitor, like an astrazol. Aromatized inhibitors were made for breast cancer patients. That's why these drugs were founded. So at that point, that would severely suppress the estrogen because high estrogen levels cause cancer. And when they went in to do the laparoscopies and they took the tissue sample, it was estrogen sensitive. That means the estrogen caused this. So high estrogen levels caused to, to flare up the endometriosis to go and to, to expand out to more places. So cutting the estrogen down cuts down the endometriosis. And this is just one thing that could ha happen to a majority of females out there. And this could definitely help a lot of them out, right? Right in the beginning. Like endometriosis, when you look at the, the numbers, like it's rose, like, I don't know, like 70 or 80% over the last two or three years. So it's just, it's a, it's a, it's something that's debilitating females. It messes with uh, fertility levels too, as well. Females that have endometriosis on their ovaries are very hard to get pregnant. So at that point, when I, met Sharice and she told me her situation and health. She told me, you know, we, we, we got things going real quick. She moved in for the first three weeks and we started planning like Peter within the first three to six months. And at that point, when we started planning, she said, well, I'm not gonna really get pregnant unless I have this, this surgery. I'm like, what are you talking about surgery? So she's like, yeah, so I'll take you to my gynecologist so you can hear it for yourself. Cause I was like, man, this doesn't sound right. So going to the gynecologist with them, the gynecologist, is the gynecologist that delivered her and her brother from her mother. That is how much he knows the family and the family history. So when I go in, we start talking to him. He starts telling me, yeah, he's like, she has one of the worst cases I've seen in the country. I've specialized in this. I said, all right, cool. He's like, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go in there, do a lap, burn off all the tissue. And once I burn off all the tissue, then you should have a, a great chance of getting her pregnant. I said, well, you know what? I, I don't think when we need the surgery, I'm Greek, right? I'll get her pregnant. No problem. <laughs> right. And I did, I did. 
I did without the laparoscopy, without doing it. But this is just something that was de debilitating to Sharice all through her life, younger, and she still deals with some of these problems today. But we've alleviated some of these issues just by messing with, with some of the hormones that needed to be, you know, adjusted and and, um, and dialed in. So there's a lot of things out there, and that's just that's just girls. Guys have them too. There's total imbalances, deficiencies out there for younger people, and we don't want to focus on younger people, right? But I don't want to just cut people off that are 18 years old. It's because you're 18 or 19 years old. doesn't mean that, hey, listen, you might need help too. And, then, you know, that's why I tell Sharice, I'm like, listen, I'm like, what if you were in this situation scenario? Like, we can help somebody. Like, why not? You know? So that's why we did it. I love it. I love it. Thanks, Johnny, for that. And yeah. then I want, to, I want to circle back to something. When I was talking about my fatigue, and even though everything's on point, the reason why I don't want you guys to stress out about good days and bad days is because I at least understand where my blood work is at. And I understand my blood work is good. Yeah. Now, if you're continuously having bad workouts and you don't know where your blood work is at, that's going to be a frustrating thing for you because yeah. you're going to be going, I train hard, I diet, I sleep right. I do all these things that these people are telling me online how to do red light therapy in the sauna and I do the cold bath and all these and you're still not making gains, then I think it would appease your mind as well just to know where your blood work's doing. And then again, Titan Medical's having a special yeah. this week on that. Yeah. And then you were talking about age. And I know if you guys all heard this, but I know there's new people here today. Um, it's surprising that people think that all you gotta do is, is go out and, and start HRT and you're golden. But Titan Medical and the lifestyle they preach is sleep correctly, yep. eat correctly, take yep. care of yourself. And the reason I say this to you guys is because I'm at the gym, good looking 20 year old kid, good build, you know, starts to talk to me and starts going, hey, you know, it, you know, I'm training. Uh, what should I do? And I go, well, just do the basics. Long story short, he kind of goes, well, all my friends say, and I think I should, I should jump on the T. And I'm like, that's what he was saying. With shirt? Yeah, the, his yeah. shirt. Yes. Yeah. Right? I know. That's wild. The reason I say this is because you would assume that you would know if I'm going to take care of myself, I'm going to eat right and I'm going to train right and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And, but I asked this 20-year-old and I said, well, uh, how are you eating? Because from the talks of it, you're not eating right. No, no, I'm not. Well, you, you don't even understand how you're training. You're asking me how to train. It's like, you don't even, it's like why are you going to jump past everything at 20 right, right. and jump on something? Well, because my friends are looking good and they're on it. And stuff. I go, it's probably working better than most of the people here. I said, go right. get your blood work done. Check that first before you do that. And then clean up your diet and start training right. and stuff. This isn't. Is it? A, it's not a freebie. No, it's not a freebie. So, what I'm saying is, make these decisions, but jumping to something when you're not taking care of the rest of the stuff, you're just you're just really setting yourself up to fail. Where the first thing is, are you drinking water? That's what Titan Medical's right. first question to me was: yeah, Are you man. drinking enough water? Are you sleeping right? Are you training right? right. What's your stress level? So, again, this is what you want. You can have a talk with me. You can have a talk with Jack, but talk to your medical provider at Titan Medical. Yes, these these people will help you understand how you can optimize your health the very best you can. Yes, and don't make a mistake. True story. Don't talk yeah. to the person in the gym and ask them what's the recipe. Don't do that. Yeah, you were shocked on that one, weren't, weren't you? Yeah, he, I'm not. When you were telling the story, I was like, you know. Dude was skinny. What are you talking about? You, you don't eat. He doesn't eat. Anyway, didn't that's eat. the problem. Yeah. Most of these people don't eat, and that, that's and you got to get the calories up. If you want to put on the mass, you got to put the calories in. And you know that's a pain in the ass sometimes. It ain't easy to eat a lot of food. I, I don't care. I don't. Not to me, it isn't. Like if I pound, like I'm literally looking at food as an energy source and a, a source that's going to build my body. I don't look at it like, hey, I'm a foodie. Let, let me taste this and let me. Oh, this tastes so good. No, I'm like, let me get it down as fast as I possibly can and get it in. Um, a lot of people don't, don't look at it like that, but that's how I look at it. And I, over the years, man, you, you'll be stuffing yourself with food and you're like, man, I don't know if I can take another bite. And you got this chicken and it's drying your mouth. You're like, 
I just got to keep keep pushing that's, down. That's the problem. You're eating the wrong food. <laughs> Johnny, yeah. you, you actually eat joking. so much better than some of the pros that I know. Really? I know, you do. Yeah. You really do. You, yeah. you are We've seen you in point. Florida. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's a, really? well, Thank you. That's a compliment to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, you really I think are. You know, it's 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 cool to see. It's it's the the consistency of day in and day out for you. It's not fancy. It's not bells and whistles. It's no. just consistent. And I yeah, try to yeah. tell people this isn't bells and whistles. This is just consistency of doing it. It really is. Simple foods, man. I know we're gonna work, right? They're pretty bland. I mean, not everybody can eat like I eat, and I don't, I don't, I don't think they should. If you can't eat like I can, then it is what it is. But you know, you need to stay in that wheelhouse of, of nutritional and good nutritional food that you're eating. And at that point, if you want to throw a little flavor on it and that's your thing, then that's great. For me, it's just not like you know, steaks. I don't you're throw any Greek man. You yeah, I, I don't, it. man. I'm like, hey, listen, <laughs> let me hit it, you know. And yeah. that's what it is. I mean, you know, and increasing your food is going to do a ton. And if you cannot eat, right, you're like, oh man, like I stuffed myself. Like, this is where MK six seven seven can come in. I'd be even more. And so, you know, the kid in the gym, I'm like, listen. Your T levels are probably good. I blood test just to see where they're at, right? But before yeah. messing with any of that stuff, let's blood test. Let's see what's going on. And then if you just need the calories because you look phenomenal already, you know, you got some good lean muscle mass on you, then let's get it in like this. And you'll bump up everything. Your recovery, everything is going to work better for you. And later on in life, you're going to probably need testosterone. So I would wait. Anybody that's out there, I tell them, well, listen, man, wait as long as you possibly can, right? Because – until you really go on it, you have no idea and you don't know what you're in for. It's not, you have to do it for the rest of your life, but I'm telling you, once you start, if you stop, it's not a guarantee that your levels are going to come back to where they were at. So at that point, you might not feel like you used to back in the day and you might feel worse when you come off testosterone. So it's just a true thing. I like to be very transparent to people and, and tell them like, Hey, listen, this is what it is. But if you need testosterone, you're not going to want to get off it because you're going to feel way better than you do uh, as far as low testosterone wise. So, you know, for those kids out there, man, make the right decisions. There's, there's so much stuff that you can do otherwise right now until you hit that plateau per se, and maybe genetics or low, low testosterone to, to wait. I mean, how many guys out there? That's what I tell to a lot of younger guys that come up to me because I, Hey man, like, you know, you're on trend. Like, you know, what should I take? Like, you know, I'm like, listen, I'm like, don't take any of that shit. Excuse my language. I'm like, just don't take any of that. Like, and for guys out there, I go, look, I go, and I, I usually go to online groups because I'm in a ton of Facebook groups and the anabolic groups and, and, and all that. So I go in there and I, I'll pick people out. I'm like, look, this guy's saying he's doing 700 milligrams of testosterone, like 500 milligrams of MPP, like all, like all this stuff, Tren, Oxandrolone, 100 milligrams per day, like, and look at him. They what destroy themselves. He looks yeah, like they don't garbage. even look good. This he looks like a sack of potatoes. I'm like, and That's look at right. all the stuff that he's doing. And yeah. if, if you come down to nutrition and training, I guarantee you're going to be in better shape than what he's looking mm -hmm. like. And he's on all these different things. Yeah. Will testosterone anabolics help you build muscle? Absolutely. I'm not going to lie and say, no, it's not going to. But at that point, like, what are you sacrificing to do that? And can you get, that possibly or at least half of that without doing anything and just training and, and, and uh getting your nutrition i think you do a lot just by doing that i think it shows with a ton of people out there they change their nutrition especially people that are overweight they stop drinking pop right that's one thing they usually drop seven to eight pounds right off the bat first two weeks after that sodium and all the other food if they get if they get in a healthy diet they start losing weight naturally like that and they start looking better so I think, I think everybody should start moving and just even if you're not working out, if you're like overweight, like really big and you have a hard time or you're embarrassed to go to the gym because you don't know how to work out. Yeah. Just uh, what is, I guess it's called mental movement. Right. Just go out, okay. like start walking and start, yep. you know, cleaning up your diet every day. You know, you eat a big fat sandwich, split that shit in two mm -hmm. and eat you know, half now and half four hours later, you're still eating the same sandwich. You just got to suffer a little. You know, don't yep. stop your face. So there's so many things that people could do before they get to do all the other crap, you I know, agree. to change their bodies. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's start moving, start moving. Like For Clark sure. said, movement, just yeah. get out there, do anything. I don't think I ever sit down. I'm always on the move. Yep. And 
I'm not complaining. I love it. I love moving. I love doing stuff. I'm complaining. You never watch a movie with me. <laughs> <laughs> but now talking about overweight people, let's yeah, talk about uh, a little uh, uh, fat loss, right? So sure. if somebody comes to you and is overweight, they don't really work out, they do their blood work, their results mm -hmm. come back, and they want to lose weight. What's mm -hmm. your protocol real quick for somebody like so that? We got a couple of different protocols. It really depends on the person, how much weight they need, really need to lose. If it's, let's say, 20 or plus pounds, right. we're going we're to definitely look at GLP-1s like semi-glutide and tirzepatide to be able to effectively um, get those pounds off the person pretty quick too as well. Um, and that usually works in the general masses out there. So people that have, you know, tried different training regimens, diet fads, maybe mm -hmm. been obese, overweight since they've been uh, a young child. Uh, or even into their adult era, right. you know, we, we have something for them, right? That's going to help them. Even if they don't train or they don't eat correctly, this is still going to help. And I say that very lightly to a certain degree, because I don't want you thinking that's what you need to do. You need to change your lifestyle with these medications. Right. You cannot hone on that enough because yeah, will you lose weight taking these medications without training or change your diet? Yes. I'm not going to lie. Yes. Will you have the best results? Probably not. Will you yo-yo back if you stop the drug and just keep on your normal lifestyle? Absolutely. So when I tell people, I'm like, listen, when this curbs your appetite, you're not going to want to be hungry. So at that point, pick and choose something you know you need to get in your body. Right. And for most of these patients, I tell them protein is your number one priority. Lean protein sources. Because we're cutting down on your calories. We don't want to cannibalize your muscle. We don't want to make you a skinny fat person per se, right? That's one thing. Next thing is fiber. So I tell them always get enough fiber so digestion goes through thoroughly and they're, they're okay there. And I'll tell them to get a little bit of carbs in if they can, but I'll tell them just to be very choosy about what they're doing carb-wise. And that's just my basic. I'm like, listen, if you need a nutritionist or dietitian, I'm sure we can, like I said, we can give you the mic or somebody else that, that can really hone in on your nutrition and go over these things. Um, but that's, that's the things that I tell these people, but that's the main one, right? Like those are the miracle drugs. And not only are they great for that, they, they do a couple other different things as far as cardiovascular health, improving that and improving, you know, protection of the kidneys and, um, you know, sugar levels, you know, we talk about that all the time, cellular deterioration, sugar levels being up. So that gets affected too, as well. And the way that your body works, it really makes your body work optimal as far as running in the inside with insulin is pancreas reversing insulin resistance these are some things that they're truly phenomenal right that they didn't know were going to happen they knew the insulin and the pancreas but the weight loss they didn't know until they started the clinical trials on the drug it was a type 2 diabetes medicine so at that point that's what the main thing was but when they seen the result they're like oh man we need to go get this and get this fda approved too because this is working very well and then the clinical studies came out with the cardiovascular health improvement and then the, the anti-addiction properties right now, they're testing right now in clinical trials. So if you take this drug, you're more inept to not want to drink, not want to smoke, or not want to do any drugs. It's really crazy how that works. So it hits that point in the brain. So they're doing the wow. clinical trials on this right now. So if this, and this has worked for a lot of people already. So that's why they're doing the clinical trials on it. So, you know, when we talk about that, there's a lot of different benefits that these drugs can do, you know? Um, and you know those are those are main ones. Those are very aggressive ones, right? But then we have other things. Also with those, you know, I'm sorry, cardiovascular health. So if you have cardiovascular disease, right? You've had strokes, heart attacks, really really bad problems with high blood pressure. We probably don't want to put you on any stimulants. And we have stimulant weight loss medications like ECA Stack Plus, ephedrine, caffeine, aspirin, B12, and chromium. Right. But if you do have cardiovascular disease or problems like that, then that's where the GLP ones do come, and they're a superstar too as well because they don't affect anything stimulant wise. They don't rate, make your heart race and they actually help the heart as far as that goes health wise. So it's a really good option for something like that. Now, if you're healthy and listen, you want some energy and you want to burn fat and you want some clear thinking, our ECA SAC plus is phenomenal. It's a capsule, right? You take this every day. I don't take any pre-workouts. I'm on point all day long. I'm, I'm lean all, all year round pretty much. I tried it anyway. Um, and it's just, it's a phenomenal, uh, therapy to be able to utilize. And you can utilize these therapies with any of the other therapies that we offer too, which is great. So you can combine some different results if you're really looking for things. Um, you can combine the GLP ones with ECA stack plus two as well. So if you're healthy all the way around, you want to lose some weight and you want some really great energy to go along with it. 
that's where you combine these two and really expedite some of the results for weight loss too as well. There you go. What, what about, uh, to write this question on screen, is there anything that can help with soreness? Sure. So when we talk about muscle soreness, what's the best way to mitigate the effects, especially in the hamstring area and quads? Obviously, you want to stretch, right? You want to put some heat on there. Um, but what can tight medical center do as far as therapy-wise for something like this? So when we talk about this, and this person looks kind of young in there, I, I, I don't really know. But I would say, listen, glutamine is your friend, right? Glutamine is usually the number one way as far as recovery-wise. That's a good one. Um, you know, will BPC-157 and TB-500 help with muscle soreness? They'll take away inflammation. If there's inflammation in there, it's causing soreness. But I think the best way to do it would, would be increase your glutamine, which would be Hercules Potion, or maybe even taking TB-500 or BPC-157. That could possibly help too if that's what's going on now. How, how many days do you sore? So usually, generally, like somebody works out their legs really hard, and two days later, they're the sorest they've ever been. Sometimes the next day for some people, but usually the second day is when people really feel it. They don't work out that much on their legs. I don't know. Mike, what do you feel? Do you usually get sore on your, your day afterwards or two days afterwards? You probably don't even get sore. Uh, on your legs. If it's a, it's a, it's all levels. It's all levels. I'm fine with soreness and I got yeah. no problem with having being soreness. And if I've trained a muscle and it's sore, yeah, I'm probably not going to hit that body part again for five to six to seven days. So I'm yeah. not even stressed about it going away. Yeah. Um, so soreness is just, it's information. Soreness yeah. is information. And so for me, I like mm -hmm. that information and I, and I do with it what I need. So, yeah. um, yeah, I'm, I got no issues with soreness. <laughs> I love it. Do I? It's a, it's a badge that you did the right thing, right? Yeah. Like, oh man. Like I really worked my muscles out where I'm sore. Oh, this is great. Like you're not injured. You're sore. To and, be and honest. I wouldn't try to get rid of my soreness any more than I'm already do just for muscle repair yeah. Yeah. because it's going to, Hey, I can't do legs in seven days. I got to wait nine days this time. Yeah. And, and again, guys, your work week on the body doesn't need to be seven days. It could be nine days, you know, it, it mm -hmm. you can spread those things out. Um, yeah. So I don't mind soreness, but like you said, um, you kind of gave them, the four one foam one rolling, on that. that's one of the biggest things I see a lot of these guys out there doing. I don't foam roll. I think it's great for guys that do. Peter does it. So if, you, if you're really sore, foam rolling is good. Like I said, hot bath, Epsom salt is usually really good. You know, if you got a sauna, that would be nice. A jacuzzi it would be nice. I mean, there's different I, things. But you're going to get soreness. This is what it is. Yeah. I'm the person that asked that. Do a response on why do you want to get rid of it without – just letting your body kind of take it because there's one thing that i do like is that i like obviously after a workout i like the inflammation it shows me that my body's repairing right. and they also talk about they don't want you to get rid of that because that's your body right. naturally fixing what right. you, you just traumatized it and so right i like that again i like that information curious yeah. on is she been sore consistently and it's just not going away or let us know but here's another one for you johnny Sure. What is a food, vitamin, mineral for general health that is overlooked in your opinion? Whew, wow. I guess I could pick one for each group, really. Jeez. I mean, vitamin wise, I think vitamin D is overlooked still. I think it's one of the biggest vitamin. Well, it's not even a real vitamin, but if it's technically classified as vitamins, I think vitamin D would probably be your biggest one. Um, for food? What is a food? Wow. What is uh, overlooked? Fish oil. Fish oil? You think fish oil is? <laughs> so the, the funny thing about fish oil is when you look at fish oil, there's actually a prescribed fish oil on the market, right? And fish oil is like when you buy them in a store, when you look at fish oil, you look at it and it's, it's really yellow, right? So Vasipa is the prescribed fish oil. And Vasipa is so good that when you look at it, it's clear. It's that pure of fish oil. And you can look at it. It's just really crazy because people are like, oh, why would you get a prescribed fish oil? Well, I don't know. But they prescribe a lot of it, I'm telling you. I mean, I don't know if the fish oils are that good that you get in a store. But the fish oils that you get, like Vasipa, very clear. And then you can you can literally look at the improvement of the HDL panel from Vasipa. I got a question for you. This is a great question. Okay, this guy, 
uh, this person asked a, a very interesting question. I think it's it's a good one. There is a panel that Titan Medical does, and they just did this for me, which I thought was great. Um, I request like an amino acid breakdown of yeah. And so for me, guys, I got an understanding on, on my glutamine, my my branch chains, every, everything there is. Johnny, can you describe all the tests that, yeah, that one does? Because yeah. if these people can understand also that second part of the mm -hmm. blood test, they can go back and go, well, um, everybody's telling me to take D, but I'm good on D. But mm -hmm. I'm really low over here on mm -hmm. leucine or lysine or any of those other things. So go yeah, for it. So explain this yeah, one. absolutely. So, you know, we do all types of in-depth testing, right? And through lab corporate and everything like that. So one testing that we do is very, very cool is the amino acid profile panel. And the amino acid profile panel, we test every single amino acid in your body, non-essential and essential. And if you don't know the difference, non-essential is made in the body, right? So you don't have to go for an outside source. Essential mineral acids are made outside of the body. You have to get from an outside source, whether it be food or any sort of supplementation. So when we talk about these amino acids, these amino acids play pivotal roles in different processes in the body and different effects that go on. Um, when we talk about peptides, peptides are amino acid sequences and just different original sequences to create that, that, uh, that drug or the ingredient or the effect. So at that point, when we talk about this test, you can look at every single one and see where you're at, where you're at glutamine wise, where you're at arginine wise, ornithine wise, all these different ones, branch chains. So one, you can tell, listen, am I deficient in some of these things? And do I really need to up my supplementation? Two, is my supplementation really working? So I've got a ton of people that always tell me about the injectables. Ah, you don't need the injectables. You can get all your nutrition from food. Oh, that's awesome. And I do agree with you. You could probably get all your nutrition from food. But are you getting that nutrition on a daily basis? Are you consuming all those food sources that you really need to get all these things? And, you know, we're like, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> how can you prove that? Right. And I'm like, well, we could probably prove through blood if you want to run our blood test and test all these different things. And like, ah, and like, I'll literally, I used to do the Pepsi challenge with people when they used to give me flack about it. Cause like, I'm not gonna spend like $250. I'm like, I'll tell you what, I'll buy the panel. If I come back right, then you'll pay for it. If you come back right, then I'll pay for it. And, you know, we'll, we'll just, we'll just do it like that. And I used to do on testosterone tests all the time. And I used to always win on those. So, you know, it's just something more that you can look at and, and go deeper down the hole and, and really optimize everything and make sure everything is really running like it should, because people really focus in on just with the general practitioner, like their cholesterol, that maybe their blood pressure and their liver, their kidneys, their heart, they're, they're good there, but they really need to look at some of these other different things because these might have different effects to truly help you down the road, whether it's health wise, performance wise, or just feeling better. All right, another one for you. This one's been asked and answered a few times, yeah, but you give them a gist. Oh, yeah, they, they do this. Do you recommend heavy weights, low reps for athletes, long rest sets in between, of course, or do you prefer lower weights with more reps for athletes? I'm aiming for strength and explosiveness. So me and Mike have definitely went over this multiple times, and it's okay. So, and I think me and him are on agreement on this. So for strength, we always want to go heavier, right? We want to go heavier lower reps to build like muscle per se more aesthetically pleasing you want to build endurance and stamina they usually go with a lower weight and higher reps um that's my, my plan that's what i would do you know that's what i do um but listen i'm not as strong as michael hearn so he'll probably tell you the best uh, ways to get strong i've seen you lift man <laughs> <laughs> I mean, i'm all right listen i'm not weak by any means but like i said strength wise he's definitely got me beat <clears throat> Ooh, this one is uh, another one we've we've asked and answered. Go for it, Johnny. Okay. So, what is a good level of testosterone? So, from 19 to 39 years old on a lab corp test, the reference range from 264 to 916. And if it went by a general practitioner or by those reference ranges, anybody in between those reference ranges of 264 to 916 is a normal level of testosterone. What is a good level of testosterone? Well, it really doesn't matter what your age is, but I would say a good level of testosterone is going to be a 700 or above. A 700 or above is pretty good. Now, if you're really young, like 21 years old, it might 
could be a little bit better, but there's nothing to mess with there. If you're 50 years old or 60 years old and you come back at a 700, 800, you're doing pretty good. Um, the only other thing you're going to look at to correlate with that is your free testosterone. People always focus on total testosterone, but you need to have both of them to really come up with what the game plan is going to be, what you're going to do. Because total testosterone might be great. Like I see it, I seen it yesterday. I seen it from this one guy, um, formal football player. Um, his dad and him opened Laser Spine Institute here in Florida, which is a huge place. And he went to some some guy and he showed me his blood test yesterday. And he's like, yeah, he's like, that's what it came back as. I'm looking at the test. I'm like, this is a classic case of what I've been telling people. I'm like, I'm like, all right, he's got a total on here, but he doesn't have your free. You have no idea what your free is at at all. You have no idea what your IGF-1 level is at at all. Like there's basic tests on here, total testosterone, cholesterol, CBC, complete blood cell count. And I think there was one other test on there, the hemoglobin A1C. And that was it. I, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, this guy is prescribing you these medications like this and you, you don't have all these answers first. I'm like, you should probably let us take a look at this, rerun a blood test through us. And let's just see. I'm like, you can go that route, no problem. But I was like, if you're asking my opinion on it, I'd probably look at it and look at all the information before I went forward with something. Johnny's got a great point of view on this one. Sure. Is Tomcat Allah we're taking? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't even know what it is, to be honest with you. So I got to admit that right off the it, bat. It's another one of these. Uh, I think Robbie's really big on it. Like Robbie, it? Robbie Robinson. Uh -huh. Yeah, he loves those. Yeah. Chinese medicine, a lot of herbs and stuff like that. Oh, it's, it's like okay. a, a type. Yeah. I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Try it. Try it. Yeah. 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 I got I gotta see what it what it does. I'll, I'll try it. Maybe run some blood on it, see where I'm at, what it does. I always like to see that stuff. Okay. All right. What is the best age to start doing blood works or taking vitamins? Also, what about massage and chiropractic? chiropractic at which age did you start with these things vitamins should be right off the bat when i was a little kid i was taking flintstone vitamins i'm sure a lot of kids my age was too well, people i'm confused it, it, i'm taking vitamins is something that you have to do as as a youngster you should because you you're normally vitamins. not getting enough iron in because the kids don't eat meat and stuff right. like this it's like uh, so um yeah, sorry, sorry for interrupting. Keep going. Yeah, Keep no, going. no problems. You definitely, definitely want to, um, you definitely want to, you know, take vitamins, right? A multi, something along those lines. The gummies, one I was talking about earlier. Blood work you should have been doing all along. So even when you're younger, you should be getting blood work done by your pediatrician, whoever it was. And as you get older, you you go up to a general practitioner and they should start running some blood work on you. If you want more in depth blood work, you can call our text Titan Medical Center. But this is something you should start really looking at from now on, like at least every year, every six months, if you want to really dial it in every three months or whatever you want to do, but it's very important. Massage. Massage, I think is, is key. I get massages. I know Mike gets massages. Sharice gets, it's key. Like it's, it's a, it's a point uh, of your recovery. It will help with recovery. Right. So this is something, even for muscle soreness, like the guy was talking about massage might be a, a, another good way to do it. Chiropractic. So, I don't really deal with any chiropractors right now. Um, at that point, I, there is a place for chiropractors. I know some people think that all chiropractors are quacks. I've met some really, really knowledgeable chiropractors, knowledgeable about the body and knowledgeable about things that work with the body. So, you know, there's good and bad in every industry, even my industry, your industry, whatever it is. So at that point, like if you can find a good chiropractor um, and you need it, right, for different things, you know, like me, like I need to get straightened out every from time to time or whatever it is. As we get a, we get older, we age, you know, things are, are popping and clicking and cracking and not in place all the time when you wake up. So that's what I would use a chiropractor for. Uh, other than that, I don't think I'd be using a chiropractor other than that. But massage, definitely. What's what, what age did I start all these things? Massage, I started from a young age. When I was young, like probably like, I don't know, like 12 years old. I mean, like, they used to do basketball tournaments. And you used to have the free massage therapists at these tournaments, right, to try to sell their services. And we go lay on the table and get free massages. So I think massage is always key and, and it should always be a part of your recovery. I think it helps in a, a lot of different ways. De-stressing you, muscle, soreness, like all different types. Uh, no, I don't train forearms, not not directly. No. You know, Peter asked me the same thing. How do you get your forearms, Big Dad? 
I want like thick forearms, right? Because I have veins through mine, everything like that. And honestly, it's the way you grip the weight. It's the way you grip the bar. And you want to make a good, tight grip on that. And when you do it, you can see your forearms flexing right away, like doing that. And when you're coming up and you're like, let's say it's a curl and you're flexing, you can feel it. I mean, you're using your forearms and pretty much everything along with your arms, right? One thing that I've seen that has helped people with forearms, because you can do the, the, the single exercise when you're bringing the weight up and bring your forearms up and do them reverse. Um, the fat grips. I've seen some people use those fat grips and get some great, great results from them. Their forearms did grow. And their whole arm grew too. So it wasn't like they weren't putting in work. I just think that the fat grips, it's just, it's a lot rounder, a lot bigger and gripping like that. I think it just, it just puts more, more, uh, more stress on the, on the forearm per se, uh, when you're doing it, which is a good stress. I like that one, Johnny. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this person has never heard of DHEA. Wow. Wow. So I've never heard of DHEA until now. Thanks so much for answering. And wow, that doctor knows a lot. I'm not a doctor, by the way. I got to put that up there. I'm the owner of the clinic. I'm very knowledgeable in pharmacology, all these protocols and everything like that, like the back of my hand, but I cannot claim to be a doctor. Said something else. Uh, in you were so ahead of the curve compared to here in Europe in regards to importance of hormone levels and supplements. Yeah, DHEA so, is a lot of places. Yeah. I don't know why that is. I really California. don't. Yeah. You can't you can't uh, order it to California. Really? You have to really? go to another side and stuff like this. Yeah, wow. but yeah, it, we're in California. It, 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 these people are crazy here. Yeah, Sorry. well, <laughs> I mean, I, I know, like in California, like like just the laws alone for like for for drugs, like for medications, like we do, is totally different. Like I said, so the whole United United States has a standard for what drug testing should be in, in like our business, right? California has that standard, and then they have another standard. That you have to like go through all these different things. Even if you want a pharmacy that's got California licensing, what has to happen is to get that licensing, a person from California has to come down to the pharmacy and inspect the pharmacy in that state and look at it for their own two two eyes and say, okay, this is good. And you have no idea when it's going to come. So yeah, I hate California and I definitely understand that. But DHA is just crazy because literally it's sold in everywhere else in a store. I can go yeah. into walgreens and buy dhea right off the counter no problem and i could take all the pills in the dhea bottle nothing's gonna happen to me i'm not gonna die or do anything like that it's just crazy but europe is different too and my question to that person is is where in europe do you live because different parts of europe are it's it's different like australia per se and australia is not in europe but australia is totally against testosterone or growth hormone but they love peptides. One of the biggest really? peptide places in the world is Australia. Some places you can get testosterone or, or anything like that by just going to a pharmacy. In some places you can't. So like in Europe per se, like the places that I know, like Greece, you can get testosterone, no problem. They go in the pharmacy, just grab it. You can get it shipped over from other countries. London, like there, and I know that there's like three or four doctors there and those doctors have so much business that they get booked out for like four to five months and they don't care. It's like that over there. And the doctors are selling the drugs right in there to the patients from these other countries. So here in the United States, we have the FDA. And if the FDA doesn't like it, you're not to have that drug in the United States. In Europe, they don't have the FDA. So you can get drugs from, let's say I'm, let's say I'm in, in London. I can get drugs from France. I can get drugs from Den Denmark. I can get drugs from Italy, Greece, anywhere that I want. And they can get prescribed through their pharmacies there or be sold by the doctor to the patient right there on the spot. So it's just really, really crazy. Like I know like we were looking at doing London possibly in the future and there is a lot of business over there. And in Canada too, there's a lot of business in Canada for sure. All right. Go, go for just, it. I just got diagnosed with a large heart through cardiac CT. Can I just text Titan Medical to update my chart? Absolutely, Mary. No problem at all. An enlarged heart? Mary, when, when did they find this out? What, what problems are you having? Please let us know. Because that's just something like we just found a large heart through CT. Like, that's like, wow. Like, 
Well, she is a dog person, so she has a beautiful heart already. She has a big so heart. That might be, right? yes. <laughs> Mary, that might just be because you have so much love in your heart for the pups. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, what do we got here? Is this a good one, Jeffrey? My dad's 58 years old. He's in great shape for his age. He does 50, 40 to 60 pull-ups and 100 push-ups every other day. Used to do something similar, hit warm-up, 100 dips, 100 squats, 100 push-ups, abs, cardio. Okay, great well, job. that's great. So, yeah, for sure. Uh, best supplements to reduce NASH, NASH. Sorry, don't know that one. Let me look it up real quick so I can give you guys some good information, not bad information. Uh, NASH. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? No, that's NAFLD. Do you got something in front of you, Jeffrey? Do you know what it is, Jeff? Uh, non-alcoholic stephiohepatitis? Like yeah, yeah. Right? It's a liver disease yeah that that's what it looks like. Yep, non-alcoholic. All right, so... Okay, all right. So for, for something like this, right? Non-alcoholic. So... What we're talking about, we're talking about liver disease. That's what we're talking about here. So when we talk about liver disease, there's one thing that will definitely help 1 million percent with this, and that's going to be glutathione. Glutathione is going to help the liver functions. For fatty livers or alcoholic fatty livers, this is a great way to go. And even when you have something like this, this is going to get a good effect. It might not take it away but it will hopefully put your levels within range, which you have a healthy level at that point. And if you have to live with this, you can be able to treat it and not have any problems down the road. Because I, I've literally seen people where they didn't know, and I knew right away they had liver problems. And the way that I knew, and what, the one guy that I knew and I was talking about and rest, rest his soul is Jerry Ward. Jerry Ward was a really good friend of mine. And Jerry Ward, if you looked at him back in the day, he would look a little bit yellowish, right? And I started looking, I'm like, Jerry, I'm like, it looks like you have jaundice, dude. I'm like, we better run some blood tests on you, see what's going on. And we literally ran his blood tests and his liver functions were in triple digits. And at that point, I'm like, see, we nail on the head, put him on glutathione and the color started turning back. That's one way. You see somebody turning like yellowish, like doesn't look right. It's jaundice right away, dude. Like I, I've seen like three or four people where they've had this and you can just tell right away. And like people don't, you don't look like yellow, like big bird. But you have like a like a tint tintish to your skin color, and it doesn't look healthy. You look, you look sick almost, and that's really what it is. Um, Let's take care of that liver, though. Yeah, liver is key, dude, and for that you can definitely help it out. All right, says so hi. My question is about diet. I struggle with it now at fifty three years of training. Any any ideas on how to mix it up a bit? I struggle with it now at fifty. At 53, you're struggling with your diet. This is called self control. I hate to say that, but that's what it is. You got to train yourself. Johnny, to- come on, be nice. Johnny, <laughs> come on. It's self control. It's- I'm going to finish on this one because, <laughs> John, everybody, everybody has problem with diet. There's not a person that doesn't. Yeah. And so, you being 53 does is no relevant difference than the 20 year old that can't stay on the diet that I was just yep. talking about earlier in the conversation. Everybody has a, yeah. that's just self-control. Like Johnny's saying, it's yeah. just diet. It really is. cut temptation out. Like best thing I tell anybody, I'm like, listen, if you live and you don't have kids, that's awesome. Cut out all the temptation in your house. If you don't have it, you're not going to be able to go in the kitchen and go grab it. Right. And that's just what it is. Some people work the exact opposite way. And I'm one of those people. I'm one of those people that if I don't got it, I really want it. Like if I want sweets, oh. if I want donuts or candy or cookies or whatever it is, I want it. And if I don't have it at the house, I'm like, damn, I better order it. And I'll order it and I won't eat it. And it'll just sit there. Okay. Okay. So I use it for like motivation. Like I know like in Shark Tank years ago, there was this company that came out and they had a locked cookie jar. All you could do, you had to bust it open like with a hammer. That's the only way you could get in. And otherwise, you'd have to wait for that alarm to go off to get another cookie. I was hmm. like, man, that's, that's kind of cool. Like, it teaches a little self control. Um, but that's that's really what it is. Start eliminating things as much as you possibly can, sugar wise and everything like that. If you don't eat those things, it usually takes about two weeks. You will not 
You will not crave those things. I usually don't. If I can stick away from things for like two weeks, I know I'm on the right diet then at that point. And I don't, I don't feel the cravings. And if you're getting everything in your diet, you really should to a degree. You usually don't have those cravings either. So that's another thing. I keep it out of the house. Uh, just anybody out there that's just talking about food, you know, you, you can spice it up, guys. If you're not getting on stage, spice it up. Have some fun. <laughs> you know, yeah. enjoy it. Johnny, yeah. thanks for hanging out today, my man. Sure. You want to, can I answer this one? Yeah, last yeah, one? yeah. Definitely, definitely. All right. It said, uh, ordered Tears Appetite, had one dose already, and love it. Your team was very professional and easy to work with. Any advice uh, you have while taking it? Very active, eat clean on, at this point. Awesome. I'm so happy. First dose and loving it. This is great. So right off the first dose with this GLP-1, Tears Appetite, she's starting to feel some of the, the benefits. And you're going to keep feeling those benefits. And the best advice that I can give you is weight train. Don't do a whole bunch of cardiovascular activity. That's the first thing that people want to do because they want to lose weight. So right. go right to the cardio with the GLP ones and you will lose the weight for sure. hundred percent. We know that cardiovascular activity going to a calorie deficit, you're setting yourself up for weight loss. But what we really want to do is we're going to get the weight loss. We really want to retain whatever lean muscle you have. And if we can recomp the body while we're doing this, that's great too. So weight training, weight training is key. If you want to add some cardiovascular activity at the end, great. Do a little bit. The next thing is eat protein. Make sure you're prioritizing protein in your diet. You want to make sure you're hitting your protein goals. So at that point, you can retain that muscle. Um, and uh, I think that's it. Uh, fiber, make sure you get enough fiber in. I, I just can't push that enough. I, I looked at the fiber, like, you know, it was a big thing because of the colorectal cancer with my dad. And I actually talked to a whole bunch of some of these, these urologists and, and, and guys, and they were talking about like fiber is key. Like it was one of these doctors in the gummy portion. He actually made a healthy fiber gummy, which is really cool. That's it. Johnny, thank you, brother. Yes, sir. I appreciate, appreciate it, thank guys. You. I'll talk to you soon, my man. All right. Talk to you later. Thank you again. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out and appreciate it. Uh, again, we're going to do this every Tuesday. We're going to be hanging out with Johnny, going over stuff. And everybody that has gone over there, Mary, all you guys, the Titan crew members, will get a check-in um, beginning of next week. So make sure that you're on the plan and everything is going well. Okay, guys? I'll talk to you soon.